Can you hear me? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome to the basement. Basement dwellers, what is going on with the gold prize? What is going on with the silver prize? Why is it being ignored, cast aside? You want to know, and I have the answers for you today in this video live stream. Thank you, basement dwellers, each and every one of you for being here. Please give this a thumbs up. That will help us get the word out to more and more people. But what is going on in the gold market? Have you noticed something lately? You wake up in the morning, you do your normal routine. If you're anything like me, you check the price of gold and silver. Gold for like the last three days. And we've seen this type of behavior over and over in the past will be up quite a bit at like 6.30, 7.30, central time anyway. And then as soon as the COMEX opens, have you noticed they knock it down, but they're having a harder time knocking it down. Are you picking up on that, right? Maybe we're up $18 and they knock it down, but they can only knock it down to nine. Right before I came on, I checked for you, the gold price, and according to Kitco, right now, the gold price is up almost $13 per ounce. We'll run out the Pimbex website later and get an update on the gold and silver price. But what's going on with silver? Are you getting angry? Are you are you like me? Are you getting a little, a little uh, uh, fed up? I think there's an opposite reaction. Do you experience this? I do. Okay. I'm just being honest with you. I'm going to let you into a little bit of my private life. But I do believe there's an opposite or a fancy word for that is inverse, but we'll say opposite reaction between the silver price and my blood pressure. So my blood pressure has been staying about even lately. But why is gold shooting to the moon? Right, guys, we had a record close in gold yesterday. We've got gold right now. I'm looking, okay. 2207 in the spot market, the futures market will be even higher. What's wrong with silver? Why is silver just levitating there? Right? Silver's doing nothing. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that in this video, but let's talk about gold first because gold is the godfather of precious metals. The godfather. Remember that movie? <laughs> gold is the godfather of the anti-fiat, of the anti big central banks, of the anti-money printing, of the anti-unicorn fart dust money system, right? Gold is the big guy, the leader. Silver will follow. Remember this. I've got some good news for you if you're a silver investor. Silver usually takes three or four months later to follow. So in the coming months, we could, right? Unless they somehow magically, do you think they're going to figure out? I mean, do you really think they're going to figure out a way to pay off the national debt, that they're going to balance the budget? I haven't heard either of our presidential candidates, any of the presidential candidates, talk anything about balancing a budget. So do you really think that's going to happen? No, right? We are in for much higher prices in gold. And eventually, silver will catch up. It may take two or three months, but remember this about gold. And this is more, more good news for gold investors. Nobody knows. Nobody knows why gold has done so well over the last number of months, right? The dollar's been relatively strong. We haven't had any new major geopolitical developments, but there's no real, like, one reason, like, oh, gold spiked up to 2200 because of this. No, it's because, and this is good news, a solid foundation layer of several fundamental reasons, and that will continue to support the price as we move into the coming months, quarters, and years. Now, I could be dead wrong. So don't make any financial decisions based upon anything that I'm saying. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm sharing with you my opinion, right? I do spend a tremendous amount of time researching this. So I'd like to think I know a little bit what I'm talking about, but nobody has a crystal ball. But if you do decide that you want to get your hands on some silver, gold, or platinum, please check out channel sponsor, Pimbex. Do I need to spell it for you? Just like it sounds, P-I-M-B-E-X, pimbex.com. Look, I never tell you what to do. You're smart, right? But be smart next time you're shopping for bullion online and throw Pimbex into the mix. Compare prices, compare reviews. And I'll tell you, I give them a real positive review. 
but listen to other people as well and compare selection. And I think what you'll find is what I found, which is why I switched to Pembex over a year ago, and that's that I get more metal, the exact same metal, right? An American Silver Eagle is an American Silver Eagle. A UK Britannia is a UK Britannia. A 10-ounce bar is a 10-ounce bar, as long as it comes from the same refinery, right? You'll get more metal for your money with Pembex. Now, uh, how about how about the reason why gold is flying? And guys, I know it's painful right now. I understand, basement dwellers, I understand, but it's going to get better. Silver will catch up. For those of you who are more invested in physical silver, hang in there, right? Because why? Why is this happening to gold? And it'll happen to silver. How about dilution? How about devaluation? How about money printing? How about funny money? How about monopoly money? You want to see some monopoly money? Hold on one second. I'll show you. And I'm, we're going to talk more about this later. All right? How about this? Huh? Is Does this up oh, upside down? There we go. Huh? Do you think that has anything to do, right? Paper, right? That's what's going on. There's no way they're going to pay the debt off. Let's run out to the U.S. debt clock, guys. We got to do our daily debt clock check. We just want to make sure that the U.S. debt level is not suddenly going down. Uh-oh. Here we go. A little glimpse. Uh, 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 uh. Hold on. Hold on. Bear with me. Debt clock. We are flying today. Wow. Interesting. When my daughters aren't home playing online games, how fast our internet. Hey, it's party time, basement dwellers. We did it. The Biden administration has fearlessly led us to $34 trillion, $600 billion of national debt. We were waiting for it to roll over. Now we have to see, will a week from now, Thursday of next week, will we have achieved the $37 trillion 600, I'm sorry, 700 billion, uh, or will our U.S. government suddenly start to uh, <laughs> spend less than they bring in? We don't think so. We know the reality of what's going on. Don't forget, what do you think it means that China, I'm hearing more and more, this is real, what's going on in China right now, guys. China, China, we don't like China's bad, right? Aren't we told we're not supposed to like China now? I don't know. I like Chinese people, but nonetheless, China bad, Russia bad, North Korea bad. Everybody else in the world seems like bad, but nonetheless, this is news. And, I'm, and now everybody is starting to talk about it. We talked about this for months. There is a gold frenzy going on in China right now. People are buying gold like crazy. The young kids are buying these these gold beans, one gram gold beans. People, 800,000 people lined up at a shopping mall on one day to buy gold. China is going nutso over gold. Why? See if any of this sounds familiar to you because they don't, people in China don't trust their stock market. People in China don't trust the currency. People in China don't trust the banks. People in China don't trust the residential real estate market everything, right? So what are they going to? They're all, you, you, I, you, I've, I've listened to these interviews with Chinese people. They're like, oh, gold is the only real true investment that always holds its value. Key word, basement dwellers, always. But think about what's going on in America right now. Could we see, could we have a lot of people in America besides you and me, right? The few, the proud, huh? Right? The precious metal warriors, the one in 200 people in this country, that's all we are. I mean, we are like, like we got the plague or something, but nonetheless, could we have just a few more people wake up? Maybe we go to, go to five and 200. That would just be five times more money coming into the gold market and would make silver just woof. Remember the seventies when silver went from a dollar 50 an ounce to over 50? Oh, yeah. Well, that was 1980. Don't, don't, I'm sorry. I made a mistake there. Uh, but nonetheless, we could see that again. What could, what coming together of factors could cause that to happen for you and me, right? Silver and gold warriors, basement dwellers. I'll tell you what it would be, right? Could you see in America that people, that the real residential real estate market has a little bit of a correction? Look, guys, 
I don't live in a half million dollar house, but according to Zillow, that's what it is, right? I'm I live in a in a basement. <laughs> But they claim the two floors above me, uh, plus this basement and the land that it sits on are worth a half million dollars. I don't buy it. A lot of my neighbors want to believe it. Um, uh, maybe I could sell the house for close to that right now. I don't know, right? I got too much crap down here to deal with moving. Do you accumulate? Do you have that problem? I have a hard time getting rid of stuff. I'm an organized hoarder. But nonetheless, could we have that in America where... This house that really, in my mind, even with today's dollars, is maybe worth 300 right? That we have a major decline in residential real estate. That people lose faith in the paper money, right? People lose faith in this stuff. Oh, well, that's monopoly money. Sorry, I got confused. Uh, here, this stuff. People lose faith in this stuff. There we go. Is this monopoly money or is this monopoly money? I'm not sure. I forget which... Hmm, close my eyes and they both feel about the same. Very interesting. Never thought about it that way. That's why I love hooking up with you people, you basement dwellers, because we learn new things. Monopoly money feels just like this currency. This currency, <laughs> this is worth something during a game. You got to believe it. You got to have confidence. Anyway, where did I go? I digress. Oh, yeah, no, Americans, they could lose faith in the banks. Didn't that just happen a year ago and we saw premiums on American Silver Eagles like go through the roof? But nonetheless, it can never happen again because the banking system sound. Although some people are saying that all the banks are basically insolvent right now when you consider what their bond portfolios are worth and their commercial real estate loans. But we'll save that for another day. Could Americans lose faith in the money in the banks, the residential real estate market? The stock market, which is at nosebleed levels. I was talking to my friend Sean this morning from college. He's like, Warren Buffett says you should never buy a stock with a P.E. over 18. Well, there's a lot of stocks in the ones that have made up the lion's share of the gains in the market over the last couple years, right? The Magnificent Seven, which I think is now the Magnificent Six. Anyway, their price to earnings ratios are through the freaking roof. But if you have a company that has a 20 to 1 price to earnings ratio, that would be in theory that that company would have to return every penny of profit that it made for 20 years just to make you whole on one share of stock that you would buy today, right? It's crazy. It doesn't make sense. So we could see that. And I'm telling you the wave of people uh, coming in. Think about the dollar devaluing. Let me ask you a question. If you're a Saudi Arabian or you're somebody in the Middle East and you're selling oil and you're getting dollars, right? You're getting paid in dollars, although they're doing less and less of that. But let's say you are getting paid in dollars and you have a choice. You could either keep that money in dollars, maybe buy some treasury bonds, whatever, or you could buy gold or silver or some other real asset. Which are you going to do? What do you think? people around the world are doing right now. They can go look at the U.S. debt clock, just like you and I, right? They have access to that information. They have access to more sophisticated information. Do you think maybe that's why the world central banks, the most sophisticated, the most uh, in, the ones with access to more inside information as to what's going on in the world financial system, do you think maybe that explains why they're buying gold at record levels? It's, it's, you know, it's so crazy out there. And when we talk about silver, right, the Chinese are buying all the silver they can. The Indians are buying all the silver they can. Why do you think, what does it mean if you think about the fact that on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, that's the competitor to the COMEX in the LBMA, where they trade unicorn fart dust silver, make-believe silver, right, levered up beyond belief, paper silver, whatever you want to call it. OK, I'm sorry if you're offended by unicorn fart dust. That's a common term that us basement dwellers use to describe anything that's essentially make believe. And that would include paper silver on the COMEX. The Shanghai Gold Exchange is newer. Right. And the Indians have their own the IIBX. I think it's called Silver Exchange and Gold Exchange now as well. Why do you think. Come on, let's put our thinking caps on. Why do you think. Silver sells on the Shanghai Gold Exchange 
for usually about $2 more per ounce than it does on the LBMA, the London Bullion Market Association, you know, the ones are that fair marketplace that sets the price of silver and gold. Why, why in China, right? I'll tell you why, because the Chinese market is based more on actual physical metal. You don't have to be an I, I, Albert Eisenhower to understand all the clues are there for us right now, right in front of us, okay? Mainstream media is talking about gold, absolutely nothing about silver. They're ignoring silver. That's okay. You know what that means? That means we're like on a scale of zero to 100, with 100 being everybody talking about silver, we're at about a two right now. That gives us a big, massive room for improvement, a long runway for improvement, if you will, right? A long runway, right? For people to start to hear about silver. They're not, there's not going to be any silver at your local coin shop. I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I do. That's my vision. <laughs> do you have that vision? Tell us, right? Tell us uh, in the comments, if you think that there, we're going to see in the next two years, we'll give a pretty long runway, okay? If you think we're going to see a period of time where there is no silver at the LCS, hold on, caps lock, LCS. Oh, shoot. Hold on, guys. I'm having some technical problems here. Okay. Type L's. <clears throat> hold on. I'm having technical problems and voice problems. Hopefully, you can hear me still. Type in, type LCS, enter. There it is. Yeah, in the chat. I'd be curious. Or do you think those days are gone? Because don't forget now, it doesn't really, I mean, the local coin shops matter, but I'd be curious. Does anybody know? Maybe I'll ask Andy Sheckman this. Like, what percentage of retail silver, we'll focus on silver, is bought in person at local coin shops versus online? I would think more is bought online at this point. You know, major big companies. We talked about Pimbex, right? You know, they're growing like crazy. And there's a reason why they're growing like crazy, which I discussed earlier when I told you about Pimbex. But there's other major big players out there. Atmex, JM Bullion, SD Bullion, Hero Bullion. I mean, there's there's probably a hundred places where you can I would think that the online marketplaces are much bigger. What do you think is gonna happen? Right. When when we go on that scale of two from zero to 100 and we're about a two right now in terms of interest, in terms of attention being paid to silver, when it goes from two to 30, they're not there's not going to be people will buy the silver. I remember do you, I remember during the C-19 crisis four years ago, I made one good buy. Look, I'm like you. Does this happen to you every time you buy something, whether it's a stock? Uh, oh, thank you, Ron McAdams, for the super chat. Ron McAdams. What a great first name too, by the way, Ron. But every time you buy something, whether it's a stock or silver, it seems to go down within the next one, two, three, five days, right? Well, I did make one good buy during the C-19 crisis. We were in Branson. We came home. It was Saturday. I think silver had closed on Friday at like 12 or whatever. And I made what was for me a very large purchase of bullion. This, I don't think Pimbex was around. So that was not from Pimbex. It was from a different online bullion dealer. Um, and then uh, they sent it to me. And that next week, it was like all the all the online bullion dealers were like, I don't know, say sold out. But it's crazy how fast this can go, guys. It's absolutely crazy how fast it can go. Okay. Um, all right. Think about this. I've got a visual for you. Just think about this as a silver stacker. They took silver out of the money back in the mid-1960s, okay? They took silver, okay? They made it into funny money, play money, right? This kind of money. That's what they made it into, okay? Um, what's wrong with Americans? I'm not talking about you, but let's talk about the other 99 out of 100 Americans. What is wrong with them? They got hoodwinked, okay? <laughs> and I mean, what's next? Plastic money? Uh, and 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 they'll con they'll convince everybody that it's valuable, um, or will it be electronic money? So I want to show you because I think it's very important to see this visually. Hey, and then I got to show you this thing. I almost forgot. This is the new 100. Somebody tell me, hey Susie, I love you. Susie's not here. She's at her mom's. She takes care of her 90 year old mother. Um, 
what a great daughter, what a great wife. But I'm going to show you guys this. I'm going to ring this thing. This is a pocket pinger, and I'll tell you about it when we get to 100 thumbs up. But first, I got to show you this. Where'd it go? You see that? That's a. Uh, that's, oh, that, that's not it. That's my kid's cash register. Here it is. My daughters are going to be ticked off that I'm playing with their toys during my live stream. This is the. This is the ultimate visual. Okay, stay with me here, guys. This. These are, um, what are they called? Peace dollars, right? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Beautiful, okay? This is a 1923 peace dollar, right? Listen, okay, listen. Money, real money, okay? 90% real silver. In the 1960s, they switched it over to this, right? These are, these are, these are 1980, 1990 quarters. Listen. Sounds different. Sounds cheap, right? They hoodwinked America. They took silver out. Oh, they took silver <laughs> out of the money and replaced it with this. And everybody believed them, right? So they could print. They could make up stuff. It was no longer tethered to anything real. This is not real, okay? Still made out of metal. They hoodwinked everybody. And then, right, they inflated it away. They've, they, 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 it, it's kind of like theft from the middle class and the lower class people because they don't own a lot of assets. So they inflated the value of the money away, right? And the rich got richer. Look at any chart that shows wealth distribution in this country. While real people that are working, doing the real work, right? A guy who's a carpenter, a guy who's a trash man or a woman or a cook or a teacher even, or a fireman or a policeman, or um, anyway, any other variety of middle class oriented jobs, which all are essential, right? They work, they work for money, this stuff, and it just loses value. Okay, they got hoodwinked and they don't even realize it. And I don't want to say, look, they don't realize it. And now, right, now they they realize like, oh, the value of my money's going down. And instead of being ticked off about it, mad. Right. It, what's going on? Remember what Thomas Jefferson said. Right. Right. The biggest threat to this country is not an invading army, but central banks and big corporate interests. Instead of being mad, you know what? Your average, the 99 other people, not you, not me. But you know what they do? They say, oh, I guess I got to get another job because Joe Biden says that's Bidenomics. I can get two jobs. And if I'm really lucky, I can get three jobs. Yeah. Right. So well, here's my question. They took it from this real money, hear that? Okay, real money to this, right? Fake, right? Fake, I don't know what's made out of zinc or uh, I don't know, copper and zinc, okay? Is this what's next? I mean, going from here to here, going from, from real silver to here is a much larger leap than going from here to here. Right. Or, you know, the other thing, because you can't see it that I have stacked here is electronic money. Right. Electronic money. Yeah. All electronic. Think about it. Right. My kids play a computer game called. Uh, well, they don't play it much anymore. They're getting older. But you probably have heard of it. It's a publicly traded company. It's called uh, Roblox. And they have money that I used to have to buy for them. Right. Money, currency, whatever. E electronic called Robux. What's here's a bunch of Robux. Going from here to here is a much larger step than going from here to Monopoly money, <laughs> funny money, Disney bucks. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm angry. Whoa. I don't want to spill that. Hold on, guys. Hey, check this out. Time for a little basement show and tell. I was in Branson. Isn't this cool? This is a cedar barrel. I'll have to get the name of the place I got it from. Handmade by a 95-year-old man. And it's got a slot. Uh, the only problem with this thing is, I guess I could fill it with constitutional. That's a good idea. I wanted to fill it with uh, with coins, but see, the slot's too small. I guess I could get my saw out and make it bigger. But you know when you find something that you just fall in love with? I was like, this is really cool. It's, and it smells good. And I really want to fill it with silver. It's got a little plug. But it, maybe I'll fill it with constitutional silver. I don't know. Anyway, real money. Uh, I'm going to keep it back here for now. <laughs> what else can I show you guys today? 
Oh yeah. You know what? We'll show Yeah. We'll, we'll show the old stopper truck here in a minute. I'm not done yet. Will it be CBD, CBDC? So remember we went from real money to fake coins, to monopoly money. Is it going to be CBDCs? Don't forget. And we talked about this ad nauseum yesterday. Everybody's, is it weird? Nobody's talking about CBDCs anymore. Central bank digital currencies. Well, the SWIFT system, which is like the backbone of the Western U.S. hegemony, hegemony, whatever, they, the SWIFT system is the interbank transfer system where they move dollars basically around the world. Dollar, you know, Western, Russia got kicked out, whatever. They have basically said that within the next 12 to 24 months, they are implementing systems that will accommodate now CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. Do we need any more proof that they're coming? I don't know. I don't think so. What do you think Andy Sheckman would say? Andy would say, well, you look at the crumbs on the ground and you put them together and you come up with a conclusion. My conclusion would be that these CBDCs are coming. And then people are telling me things like, I go to the grocery store and I want to buy a steak and the CBDC will tell me, sorry, Ronnie, you have no steak. You ate too much steak this year. You eat chicken or you eat sausage or what are they saying now? <laughs> They're talking about some of this like future food is going to be like insect based. I'm going to have to really get used to that one. How about you? No offense to anybody out there. Eating insects grosses me out. Sorry, I mean, I'm, Susie and I watched that show. Do you ever watch that show called, uh, not Survivor, Naked and Afraid? When my daughters were little, they'd love it because the people were naked, right? They'd like drop two naked people in the middle of the jungle and they have to survive for 21 days. Uh, I'd rather watch that than CNBC or uh, MSNBC or something like that. Anyway, well, oh, they're always eating insects. And then what really freaks me out is when they eat snakes. Nonetheless. Why was I even talking about that? Why are you still here? I'm supposed to be talking about silver and gold. I'm sorry, I digress. Oh, frog legs. That's what I, last thing. I've never eaten a frog leg in my life. And it, the thought of eating a frog leg grosses me out. And I'll tell people like, I know it's weird because I'll eat part of a chicken. I'll eat part of a cow. But you put a frog leg in front of me and I feel like I want to throw up, which makes no sense because I've never even tried one. And everybody says it tastes just like chicken. So maybe... Maybe someday in my life, I will try a frog leg. I was at this buffet in Springfield, Missouri with my cousin Douglas. This was, gosh, before the girls were born, 15 years ago. And we were having dinner and they had frog legs on the buffet. I can still see the pan of frog legs. <laughs> Welcome to Ron's Kitchen. This is where you learn about cooking and culinary insights. All right, let's get back to silver and gold, okay? Um, yeah, maybe maybe we will indeed live in a complete... Hey, ODBG, good morning, Ron. Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. Thanks, old dirty bastard. Thank you, Metal Seer. Uh, Robin Hood introduced a gold card, plastic money. Yeah, it's all... Pla it's, uh, maybe we're going to live in a complete... Unicorn fart dust world where everything will be okay, right? M numbers don't matter. That doesn't matter. Derivatives don't matter. I don't buy it, okay? Um, there's the, the, what, what I do know is this. What we do know, if you're a middle American, unless you're part of the one top 1% one, 1 of the top 1%, basically your wealth has been stolen from you by inflation. Over the last couple of years, it's been rather uh, uh, outrageous. And over the last 50 years, it's been, do you know, how does this, I mean, think, um, you're a gold and silver investor. Think about this. Since 1971, the U.S. dollar, oh, I got one here. This, this thing, right? Is that real? I got my eyes closed. I can't tell, guys. I, either I'm holding up a piece of Monopoly money or a U.S. dollar. <laughs> I wish this wasn't the case, but since 1971, when I was a very cute one-year-old baby, this thing has lost 98% of its value against gold. Okay, yeah, this is a smart way to store wealth. Uh, maybe not, right? Unless you're really wealthy and you own a bunch of property or a bunch of stocks, which are in a bubble, both of those are in a bubble, but still, nonetheless, I tell you what, if I had a bunch of money, in the stock market right now, if I had a bunch of like residential real estate, 
I'm just saying what I would do. Don't make any financial decisions. Adopt a puppy or get engaged or do anything like that based on what I'm saying. But if I had a bunch of money in the stock market, if I had a bunch of money in uh, that that cryptocurrency that starts with the letter B, this is just me personally, if I had a bunch of money in residential real estate, if I had 15 rental houses, I'd be liquidating part of that investment and buying some silver, buying some gold, buying some one ounce gold coins, which I don't own any because I don't own any physical gold. I own a bunch of mining stocks. I'd be buying a bunch of silver. That's what I would be doing. I mean, I wish, right, that I had put all my money in the S&P 500, right? I mean, I'd be converting it, but that's just my opinion. Okay, what's up with silver? What's up with silver? That's this whole video was supposed to be about why is poor silver being ignored? It's not fair, right? And we feel the pain. We're the silver investors. Inflation is real. Do we believe the government figures? Believe your gas bill. Believe your grocery bill. Believe your rent payment. Believe your car payment. Believe your how much you got to pay to let your kids play uh, select volleyball, whatever, you, whatever you're doing, right? Believe those things. All the prices are going up, up, up. Everything, I hate to bring this up. Don't be mad at me. Please don't, I, don't I, I get enough hate mail <laughs> and a lot of really nice mail too, a lot more nice mail, but you know what it's like to be human. Are you this way? I, I, I hear that this is common, but are you this way? You could get 99 compliments today and one criticism. And the one thing that'll stick in your mind is that criticism. Don't let that happen. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, right? You all have you, yes, you have a lot of great attributes. One of which. I'm very grateful for you for joining me here in the basement. Thank you. Okay, please don't forget thumbs up. I really appreciate the super chats. It goes a long way to help support the channel and the family, my 12-year-old twin daughter's spending habits. But most importantly, it's a big, big, big day uh, uh, that you're here. Big Tim, hey, wants to visit the first Majestic Silver Mint. Yeah, no joke. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Keith Newmeyer a week, oh no, Tuesday of next week. And I'm going to ask him about that mint. Keith Newmeyer, right? The first, you know, like the, the a warrior, one of the warriors, in my opinion, in the precious metal sector. I am talking to Dave Morgan here in about one hour from the Morgan Report. Everybody knows David Morgan, right? He is also, in my opinion, one of the royalty in the precious metals investing sector, right? Another warrior for the precious metals. Don't forget, guys, uh, silver is like the only precious metal that is not anywhere near its all-time high. We know gold, right? Gold was at an all-time high just recently. It's bumping up. Hopefully, it's still above 2,200 this morning. Silver, silver is like half of its all-time high. Can you, I mean, does that make any sense? And it's the precious metal that's in most demand. You know the figures. You know 60% of it's being eaten up by industry. I mean, come on, does this make any sense, right? Silver's, and, and the premiums are low. Hello, Metal Seer, gold off to the races. Awesome. Hey, let's do it, guys. Let's take a break. Let's take a little break. Hold on. I'm going to take a little drink of water. Give me one second. Don't leave. Don't leave. Hey, Susie. Susie's not here. Hey, Susie, could you call me on the phone and tell me how many thumbs up we have? Because I have a new bell to ring when we get to 100 thumbs up, okay? Um, we're going to go out real quick here, guys. We're going to go on a little field trip, and and we aren't going to go to the debt clock. Let's just check real quick. Up, oh, still going up. <laughs> we're going to go check on the silver price and the gold price. P -I oh, there we go. I type P and my browser brings up Pimbex. Let's see what's going on. Oh my gosh. Oh my Lord. Holy moly. Is that right? Oh my Lord. Up $22. Wow. <laughs> All right. Basement dwellers. We're having some fun today. Man, that is awesome. Uh, yeah. So anyway. If Susie can, uh, somebody could send me a text or call me when we get to 100 thumbs up. I want to ring the pocket pinger, baby. We got a wow, yes. Uh, Patrick Pearl has some sort of social credit score. Yeah, it's, you know, that's the whole scare with 
that's the whole big scare with the um, uh, with the CBDCs, guys. Somebody brought up there, right? Um, uh, I think Silvershire is talking about the 1980 high when adjusted for today's dollars. Okay, so we got to $50 in 1980 for silver. Okay, we're at 25 now. 1980, I was 10 years old. I was building a little uh, remote control car in the basement, the Tamiya, whatever, grasshopper it was, right? I mean, that was a long, long time ago, right? A long, uh oh, here we go. Big Tim. Oh, man, we got 184 thumbs up. Thank you, Big Tim. Appreciate that, my friend. Um, Oh, if, but now, but now, if you adjusted that fifty dollars for inflation, it's like one hundred and sixty. I've heard as high as one hundred and eighty-seven. I won't argue. Hey, I'll take one hundred and fifty. Hey, we'll take a hundred dollars silver. And I'm telling you, basement dwellers, that's right. You're a basement dweller. I keep forgetting. <laughs> you know, that's that's our call. We have certain words, right? We know what the S word is: stagflation. For those of you who are new. Right, we know what unicorn fart dust is, and we know when that silver price like reflects reality, it's going to be Katie bar the door. It, you know, it could go. You hear people talk about six hundred dollar silver. Yeah, it can go even higher. I got a lot. I've been attacked. Okay, I've been attacked for some of my thumbnails where I say a hundred dollar silver, eighty five dollar silver. The reality, guys, right, is that based on the numbers. Okay, this is going to be very quick. Based on this right here, okay, just that number alone, okay, and the fact that that is growing faster and faster and that there's more being added to it, to the national debt, and then as interest rates, as less people want to buy the national debt, and it's going to happen, that, that the uh, rates are going to go up, which will mean the interest expense goes up, which means that number, it's a spiral. It's not a good situation, right? And if you don't agree with me, here, let's do a live. Let's do a quick live. Let's go over. And then I'm going to ring. I'm going to tell you about the, the pocket pinger. It's really cool. I saw it this morning. Hopefully you guys can see my screen. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Great article. The the government, um, the government. Okay, that guy, the Sam Bateman Freed, is going to get uh, sentenced today. Uh, Carnival Cruise Lines is whatever. Blah blah blah. Bidenomics blowback. Bear with me. Bear with me. Pending home sales. What'd that say? Hover near record lows. Yeah. Didn't we just talk about that? Oh, the BlackRock CEO is very bullish on Bitcoin. Sure. Yeah. Right. That was the whole thing with Bitcoin, right? Like it was outside of the mainstream financial area, but now somehow it's a good thing. I don't know about that. And somebody please tell me who invented Bitcoin. That would be a good start. All right. Jobless claims continue to hover. That's not that's not what I'm trying to show you guys. Amazon is uh, is closing down offices. Okay. Uh, U.S. backed itself. Darn it. There was an article. I can't find it now. Maybe it's at the very top. Hold on. There was an article that basically said the, I think it was the CBO, one of the big um, government agencies basically warned that like, um, that we're, that we're in for, I can't find it so much for being prepared. Right. Uh, one of the big government offices put out a report saying, Hey, we're screwed. Okay. America, we're screwed. They even went as far as to compare our current debt situation, our current fiscal situation, that's called fiscal, fiscal policy when the government does it. Uh, we'll, we'll just call it F, F, <laughs> the F policy, F, up, um, F policy, sorry, fiscal policy that we're basically heading towards disaster. And they went as far. What does this mean to compare what happened? I don't, you probably don't remember this. It was either a year, a year and a half ago, I think it was. In Great Britain, they had a big crisis where the government had to step in and they said, we are basically at that same stage right now. So I don't know, guys, it's not looking good out there. It's not looking good. We got more to talk about silver, right? Uh, industrial demand force oh, continues upward. Let's ring the bell. This is cool. Have you guys seen one of these? Okay. A base, basement dweller, John. That's an American silver eagle. There you go. That's an upside down eagle. But anyway, you get the point. 
John645 sent this to me. This is called a pocket pinger. It says sound money on there. I don't know. You probably can't see that in black. This is a way that you can test your silver. I think you can even do bars on here, like little bars and, and rounds and everything else. And there's an app. Uh, let me show you the app real quick that I've been using called Ping Coin. Okay. And I have an Android. But what you do, this thing has JAWS, and I'm not sponsored by this company or anything else, but instead of ringing the bell, I'm going to ring this for you. This little contraption has JAWS and like these little rubber things there. You, this is a, just a regular American Silver Eagle. Aren't they beautiful? I'm sorry, I do that every video now. Let's take a moment and admire the beauty of the American Silver Eagle. I'm trying to get it in focus. Okay. Anyway, you stick it inside there like so. Okay. And then you take it and you do this. Watch this. All right. Now I'm going to do it right by the microphone so you can hear it. Now, people that have a more trained ear than me can hear this ping and tell if it's a real or a fake coin. Okay. So I'm going to ring it. One. Two. Can you guys hear that? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, what you do with this app is you tell it which coin you have, which I would press the American Silver Eagle button, and then uh, you ping it by the microphone, and it can listen. It measures the sound waves or does something I don't really understand, and it'll tell you Yes, it's real or no, it's a fake. And uh, this one I got from Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. I'm happy to announce it's real. They also give you this stick that you can use. Oh, wow. Listen to that. Let me get a fake. Um, and John645 also sent me these high-powered magnets very super nice of him. I'll do more with that later. But let me let me get a fake. I have a fake coin uh, that Coin Shop Chris sent me uh, to show me a fake. It wasn't a fake that he was sending me, thinking it was real. It was a real. He knew it was a fake. He said, "I want you to have a fake coin," which blew me away. Hold on one second. Okay, this is a fake uh, Morgan. Okay, let's see if you can see that. But it looks real. It would fool me, okay? Let's hear what, I've never done this. So this is breaking news. I just want to do this one really quick and let's see if we can tell a difference. Yeah, ooh, listen to that. That is a much higher, much higher pitch. Very interesting. Thank you, John645. Super appreciated. You guys always are sending me the coolest stuff. Okay, Don, uh, my my bit, Don the Brain sent me. He sent me an eagle and sent me um, all cool books and all kinds of stuff. My friend Elaine over in Paris, right? This is one of the coins he sent. Really a cool. Look at the back of this coin. Silver is so beautiful. Do you agree? I'm so. Oh, look at that! Wow. Hi, Elaine. Hello, my friend. I know you're in France, and I will come see you in Paris sometime soon. Okay, look at that. Um, all right, hold on. We're not done. We got a lot more to talk about, and I'm going to turn the page. Let's turn the page, basement dwellers. I'm going to repeat this. I said it earlier. Silver, usually, guys, okay, what's wrong with silver? That was the whole point of this video. We were upset. Why is, sil why is gold going to new record all-time highs and silver is languishing? It usually takes three or four months for silver to catch up. Same thing with the mining stocks. If you're invested in the mining stocks like I am, you're still in pain, okay? But, but if things keep going the way they are, let's not forget, okay? <laughs> let's not forget. <clears throat> The Middle East is a tender box, okay? I pray for the safety. Let's all have a moment and pray for the safety of everyone 
especially U.S. service members, but everyone in that region. We don't, I mean, there's a lot of violence going on. The Middle East is a tinderbox. The Ukraine is a tinderbox. Look, there's people now saying, and I'm not saying this, but well, I'm not people. It, the Russians are saying they're very suspicious. That horrible, horrible. Did you see that? I hope you didn't. I did watch some of the footage of what happened in that concert hall. It was horrible. And the Russians are saying uh, they're very suspicious. I, I'm not, you know, but they're basically, from what I understand, are saying that they're very suspicious that there could have been some involvement in that from the Ukraines and from the West. Look, that's just what they're saying. I'm reporting the news, okay? The U.S. is a tinderbox. I mean, can you feel it, right? Politically, we've got this big election coming up. I mean, just absolute craziness right now, politically, socially, financially. Everybody is in stress in this country. Are you in stress? I'm in stress. It's stressful to be an American. It's really, really stressful. Hey, thank you. Whoa, channel sponsor, First Mining Gold. If you want to learn more about First Mining Gold, they have two multi-million ounce gold development projects in Canada. Reach out to Paul Morris. He's a really nice guy. I put his email address in the description of this video, or you can go to firstmininggold.com. Fortuna Silver, <coughs> my favorite. Just my opinion, not giving financial advice, but Fortuna Silver is my favorite producing gold and silver mining company. First Mining Gold is in the development phase. They're getting permits for these big projects. Fortuna has five operating mines. Look, it may sound corny, but I really, really like their CEO. I love the people that I interact with at the company. They are top notch. There's a reason why the company has grown from one mine to now five operating mines over the almost past 20 years. And I'm so excited to see how they perform during this first quarter of 2024. You can learn more about Fortuna at fortunasilver.com. Middle East tenderbox, uh, Europe tenderbox, United States tenderbox, China and Taiwan situation. Tenderbox, remember, China bad. That's what that's what we hear, right? If you watch, if you just watch what they tell you on the mainstream media, China bad. North, nobody talks about this one, but North Korea is like getting very aggressive towards South Korea. Tenderbox. Okay. I watched. It was kind of scary, like a big military parade that they had in North Korea. I was like, what? What is going on, man? Um, nobody, nobody. Think about history. It's a fact. When the world is at odds with each other, and I'd say in my 54 years, right? I was born in 1970. In my 54 years, how about you during your life? Have you ever seen the world? with so much conflict, so much tension, so much change occurring, right? That's the time when countries don't trust each other. I think the level of trust amongst countries, in my opinion, is lower now than ever before. But what does that have to do with the price of silver and gold, you might ask? Well, when country, countries don't trust each other, they don't trust each other's Unicorn fart dust, paper. They don't trust it, right? What do they do? They want real assets. Remember earlier we talked about if you're a oil pumper over in uh, over in the Middle East and you're selling oil and you're getting dollars, do you want to hold on to these things, right? Remember, they can look at the U.S. debt clock also. They can watch what's going on in the United States also. What are they going to want? No, here's what they want. Uh, they want, I'll take this. This is real money. This is constitutional silver. See, you can hear it, right? That's what they want. That's what they'll take. They don't want the paper. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting couple of years, guys. Man, I'm telling you, basement dwellers, you know, sure, the price of silver could crash, right? It could. I'd be very sad. OK, but I want to tell you, it could happen. Right. Silver could go to twelve dollars an ounce. Silver could go to fifteen dollars an ounce. I guess silver could go to six dollars an ounce, whatever. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the risk of that happening is 
far outweighed by the fundamental factors that are impacting the market and will continue to impact the market as we head into these next couple of years. Gold looks very good as well. I want to say thank you to the moderators who've been here on this live stream, are always on the live streams. It's a big, big deal. Thank you for being an integral part of the channel. Thank you to Susie, my lovely wife, for not only what she does for the channel, but for uh, everything she's done for me. Hey, everybody, Susie's birthday's coming up, okay? Uh, Tuesday of next week. So uh, anyway, I believe her email address is in the description of this video and all the videos. And uh, hey, have a great day. Thanks for being here, okay? And I think I covered everything. We'll see you, Basement Dweller. Have a good day, okay? Be good to yourself. You deserve it. You really do. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ha <laughs> ha, bye bye.